Hello everyone and welcome back to another True Crime Mysteries video. Thank you all for being here. Today we're discussing five most wanted fugitives that were located and arrested in 2022. Let's get into it. Number one, Caitlin Armstrong. On May 11th, 2022, 25-year-old Anna Mo Mariah Wilson was discovered deceased in a friend's home in Austin, Texas. Wilson was a professional cyclist and was in Austin for a race. Earlier that evening, Wilson had gone out for dinner with a fellow cyclist and previous romantic partner. The two reportedly weren't seeing each other at that time, but had ended things recently amicably. After dinner, Wilson was dropped off at home. Around 10 p.m. that night, a black Jeep Grand Cherokee was seen on video surveillance arriving at the house Wilson was staying at. The vehicle was only there briefly before leaving again. Shortly later, Wilson was found with several gunshot wounds. Wilson was declared deceased at the scene. The murder investigation quickly connected the shooting to Wilson's ex-boyfriend's current girlfriend, Caitlin Armstrong. In addition to Armstrong owning a black Jeep Grand Cherokee, she also owned two firearms and one of them matched the shell casings found at the murder scene. Through Wilson's cell phone records, investigators were able to piece together a motive. Armstrong had likely discovered that her boyfriend had been seeing Wilson and had murdered her in a jealous rage. The boyfriend initially denied any romantic connection to Wilson, but after seeing cell phone records, eventually admitted that he had been seeing the two women romantically and they apparently didn't know. However, it appeared that Armstrong figured out her boyfriend's double life. Armstrong was brought in for questioning the next day and was asked why her vehicle was seen on surveillance outside a murder victim's home, and she offered no explanation. Soon into the interview, Armstrong lawyered up. Law enforcement had wanted to arrest Armstrong that day on suspicion of murder. However, there had been an issue with some paperwork and they were forced to release her. Six days later, on May 17th, they had an arrest warrant. However, when they showed up at her home, Caitlin Armstrong wasn't there. They discovered that the 31-year-old yoga instructor had been busy starting from the moment of her release. Armstrong had ID allegedly belonging to her sister, she had sold her vehicle for $12,000 cash, and had used that cash to elaborately travel from Texas to Costa Rica in order to make it more confusing. And we start tonight with an update on the Love Triangle murder case, one that we have been following closely for weeks. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Marnie Hughes. It has now been six weeks since Caitlin Armstrong took off, accused in the murder of pro cyclist Mo Wilson. The U.S. Marshals have upgraded the status of this case to major, which basically means they are putting more resources into finding the yoga instructor. There have also been several major developments. First, we have learned that Caitlin sold her Jeep for about $12,000 before she was going on the run at a dealership near Austin, Texas. Police are now trying to follow that money trail, determine if she cashed the check and where did she do it. There is also a major reward being offered in this case, at last check, up to $21,000. And then there is this, new images tonight showing what Caitlin might look like if she changed her appearance, specifically her hair. For 43 days, Armstrong had been moving around Costa Rica. In that time, she had plastic surgery to alter her appearance, she cut and colored her hair, and was jumping from hostel to hostel, teaching yoga where she could earn cash using a variety of aliases. U.S. Marshals apprehended Armstrong at a hostel in Santa Teresa on June 29, 2022. When arrested, she had denied that she was Caitlin Armstrong and was held in Costa Rica until her identity could be confirmed by fingerprint. From there, she was arraigned and deported back to Texas, where she remains in custody for the murder of Anna Wilson. She has pleaded not guilty and is currently being held on a $3.5 million bond. Her trial is scheduled for June 22, 2023. Let me know if you want any updates on this trial. There may be additional charges and arrests made if law enforcement can prove that Caitlin Armstrong was assisted in fleeing the country. Number 2. Quashon Burton 
Wanted fugitive Quashon Burton was on the run for nearly a year before he was tracked down after being spotted by a federal agent, Jeff Andre, on vacation at Disney World. Andre was also on vacation and in a strange cosmic coincidence had spotted Burton while at the Animal Kingdom theme park. The 32-year-old Brooklyn, New York native had been charged with fraud after stealing the identities of four people and applying for several COVID-19 relief loans. The fraud scheme had allowed him to collect over $150,000. He had been charged in November 2021 in a crackdown that discovered dozens of fraudulent schemes to collect on pandemic relief that had been created to help small businesses. When law enforcement went to arrest him back in 2021, they discovered he had fled his home and had been on the run ever since. Burton had a distinctive H tattoo on his neck, and it was this tattoo that caught the eye of Jeff Andre. Andre, with the help of Disney security, arrested Burton. Burton gave them a fake identity and forged ID at the time of his arrest. He was later brought into custody and fingerprinted, which confirmed his identity. He's being held without bail as he is deemed a flight risk and is waiting for extradition back to New York. Number three, Lewis Flood. Lewis Edward Flood was discovered living in British Columbia, Canada after 20 years on the run for criminal sex offenses with minors. Flood, now 77, disappeared from Idaho when he was released on parole in 2001 after serving three of his 18 year sentence. Flood had been featured on the television show America's Most Wanted in 2011 in hopes that the public would be able to help get him back into custody. It was in July of 22 that a tip came in into the Canadian RCMP in Creston, BC that had reported Flood in the area. The RCMP contacted the U.S. Marshal Service, Idaho State Corrections, and the Idaho State Police, and a coordinated effort was made to arrest Flood. He was arrested on July 21st and extradited back to the U.S. on July 25th, where he will serve the remainder of his 13-year sentence. No word yet on if he committed any further attacks while on the run or how he remained undetected in Canada for so long. Number 4. Usman Kasim 40-year-old Usman Kasim was wanted in Canada and recently apprehended by UK authorities. Kasim had been on Canada's 25 most wanted list for a variety of assault charges, criminal harassment, and failure to comply and attempted murder. In January 2020, Kasim was identified as a suspect in an assault investigation. In April 2020, Kasim allegedly had fired several shots at a couple sitting in a vehicle in a seemingly random attack. Then in October 2021, police were alerted to an attack in a parking structure where a woman was attacked by a man with a firearm. Surveillance connected the attack to Kasim. He was then placed on Canada's Most Wanted in 2022 and was recently discovered to be living in the United Kingdom. There had been a $50,000 reward for information leading to an arrest, and at this time, it is unclear if the reward had motivated someone to provide Kasim's whereabouts. He was arrested on November 7th, 2022 by UK authorities and is currently being held while he waits to be deported back to Toronto. Number 5. Octaviano Juarez Coro On September 8th, 2021, the FBI made an announcement. A Milwaukee fugitive wanted for murder would be added to the FBI's 10 most wanted list, 47-year-old Octavio Juarez Coro. He was wanted for an incident that happened on Memorial Day on May 29, 2006. Hundreds of people were gathered in the South Shore Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, all celebrating the American holiday with barbecues and picnics. One family was enjoying themselves when someone noticed trouble approaching them. Octavio Juarez Coro was walking up to the family. He wanted to speak to his estranged wife. It was her family who he had dropped in on uninvited. A friend intervened and tried to get Octavio to leave without causing a scene, but was unsuccessful. Octavio and his soon-to-be ex-wife were in the final stages of their divorce, but couldn't agree on a custody arrangement of their three-year-old daughter. It was this issue that had brought him to the park that day. Octavio refused to leave the family affair, becoming increasingly agitated, and then suddenly produced a handgun. 
He ordered his ex-wife, her boyfriend, and three other members of her family to get on their knees. In front of his daughter, he began firing, wounding three and killing two. His wife survived two gunshot wounds to the chest, but her boyfriend had been one of the victims killed along with a family friend. Octavio then fled on foot. Officers were not able to locate him, and he remained at large for over a decade. For 16 years, he was on the run, and he was recently captured. It had been thought that Juarez Coro had fled to Mexico, and those suspicions were confirmed when he was spotted in Zapopan, Guadalajara, Mexico. It was a tip from the public that allowed the FBI to capture him. Special Agent Michael Hansel said in a statement, quote, Juarez Coro spent the last 16 years running from law enforcement, hiding in another country, and believing time and distance was on his side. The FBI has a long reach and extraordinary law enforcement partnerships across the globe. I commend the tireless efforts of all our partners from Milwaukee to Mexico in closely coordinating with the FBI in capturing this wanted fugitive and helping to bring this violent offender to justice, as well as closure to the victims and their families. This is another instance of proving that discussing these cases and keeping them in the public eye is an excellent tool for getting these cases solved. After running for 16 years from police, the FBI, and a slew of investigators. If Mr. Juarez Coro wanted to answer to these charges, he had years and years in which to do so. Octaviano Juarez Coro, one of the FBI's most wanted fugitives, is finally behind bars and in court for the South Shore mass shooting. He pulled out his gun and in front of numerous witnesses who know him, including his ex-wife, he executed people. An assistant district attorney pushing for a $10 million bail replayed the scene police laid out from May 29, 2006. Witnesses and surviving family members told police Juarez Coro confronted his ex-wife at a family picnic in South Shore Park, then became upset she wouldn't let him see their daughter. Police say he ordered her and four other people to the ground, shooting them all. His ex-wife, who survived, got two bullets to the chest. We heard what appeared to be fireworks at the time, and when we turned around, there was a man standing over these people by the picnic table, and he was shooting them. Pushing back on the ADA's recommendation for maximum cash bail Wednesday, Juarez Coro's public defender argued he technically has no previous criminal records here and could be let out with an ankle monitor. There was no criminal record because Mr. Juarez Coro is a working man. He is a family man. Mr. Juarez Coro recognize that the allegations in this complaint are very serious and he has expressed he has no intentions of leaving Milwaukee. The court commissioner ultimately setting bail at a million dollars. Some 16 years on the run. Caroline, he's facing multiple counts of intentional homicide and could spend the rest of his life in prison. Well, that's it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this content and what I do over here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. If you give this video a like, if you enjoyed the content, that would be much appreciated as it is the easiest way to help the channel grow. We also have channel membership or Patreon if you want to get more behind the scenes or content or just to support the channel. In the description box of this video, you also find links to all my socials to connect with me as well as other goodies. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.